Welcome to another episode of the Carry Trainer Higher Line Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to yet another episode of the Higher Line Podcast. As always, these podcasts are brought to you by the fine folks at Gunfighter Gun Oil. If you know that we own the company, you'll find that amusing, but it is the best firearm lubricant, cleaner, and grease on the market, always to be had at gunfighteroil.com. Got a special guest in here today, came all the way from, are you in Phoenix? Phoenix, yeah. You're in Phoenix. Yoni Coclon. Coclon. Co- co- long cock is what it means <laughs> translated. Co- coclon. 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 Now, what, how am I saying it any different? Coclon. Not too different. Try it. I, you, I don't you know try. if I could say it you the way try, you're saying You it. try to say your name. Okay, Cachlon. Cachlon. There you go. Cochlon. That was better. Cochlon. Yoni Cochlon. Cachlon is easier for Cachlon. most. Cachlon. That's Yoni it. Cachlon. <laughs> Balancing paws training. Balancing paws dog training. Well, so we're supposed to just interpret the dog as... So those of you that are listening... I'm looking at the camera now. Those of you that are listening, he's got a shirt on that says balancing, pause, training underneath. And there's a little picture of a dog sitting up, looking at its trainer with its ears folded back, tail just perfect, saying, teach me. So you own a dog training business in Phoenix. Backstory, though, you and I met at one of our carry trainer classes in uh, Phoenix region last year. Was that this year? It was this year. This year. It's already a couple months ago. Yeah. yeah, a couple months back, and I was intrigued uh, by the dog training stuff. You're also a a gymnast slash circus clown slash you do like balancing on your hands. There's pictures of you like holding dogs in your hand while you're doing balancing yeah, yeah. things. How do you get the dog to sit in your hand while you're balancing? Uh, well, they're sitting on my on my butt. Actually, in one oh. of the pictures, I think that you're okay. Something refer- referring to. Now, how do you make them get up there? Uh, well, sometimes depending on the size of the dog, I will have someone put them up there for me. You know, oh. get that uh, Instagram shot going. Sometimes, depending on how long I have the dog for, I can actually teach them to do that kind of stuff. Just like, hey, hop on this table. Now hop on my lap. Now hop on me while I'm upside down. I got you. Yeah. What got you into training dogs? So, training dogs, I was in college. ASU, ASU, right? Yep, ASU, ASU, Arizona State University. And I went until my senior year, and I was not doing as well as my parents had hoped. And they were, you know, very kind and awesome and supported me through the whole thing. And what they were you were, studying? Um, I bounced around. I was, went from communications to economics to mostly partying. Cool. Yeah, so I partied a lot. That's, and that's, a, that's a party school. It's a party. It, it is, and probably it was, and probably still is. And, you know, I, uh, I enjoyed my time there, and I learned a lot about how to communicate with people, I think, is the biggest takeaway from me for college. And then one day, you know, my parents weren't happy with my lifestyle choices and decided that, uh, you know, they weren't going to pay for school anymore, and they weren't going to pay my rent anymore. Because your grades sucked. So my grades sucked. I was out every weekend. I was, you know, doing things that uh, most parents don't, especially my parents who came here from a different country. Um, they were expecting me to be studious every day, and which you should learn, obviously, right? You said, I love better. America. Yeah. So I, I, girls and beer. Girls and beer, beer pong and, and frat parties. and. Are you good at beer pong? The up. I haven't played beer pong in a while, so I couldn't tell you. But so if we got some cups and... We could play, yeah. yeah. Sure. You learn to communicate in school. I'm, what do you mean by that? Like, well, is it because you had to had to interact with a bunch of different people? Well, I, I joined um, I joined the fraternity my first year in frat college, boy. frat boy. The uh, and I took it upon myself to do my best to get people to come to the parties every time there were parties, and you know, hire the DJs and. Go what, bouncing around. And, what compelled you to try to get people to these parties? Is it that you wanted to have a good party? Did you want to be liked? Did you want your frat house to be known as like the cool party house? Were you trying to get laid? I think it was a combination of all those things, probably. Okay. You know, I just always had this idea that in order for things to be fun, there had to be interaction and, and there had to be more people and more drinks and so all you're that like stuff, so. the guy off Animal House driving around campus that was like, hey. Party. <laughs> yeah. Not that much, but yeah, you know, handing out flyers and 
back then it was creating like Facebook groups that were like, mm -hmm. hey, come to this party, girls and guys. And you know, not too many guys. We had plenty of guys with the fraternity, but mm -hmm. sometimes we'd invite other people over and team up with other places and stuff. So I thought that was kind of my biggest takeaway from, from school, honestly. So your parents spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Are your mom and dad gonna hear this? Yeah, oh yeah. What's their first names? Uh, Monica and Monty. Monica and Monty, so your thousands of dollars. <laughs> Uh, he got good at setting up drinking parties where his hope was to be with chicks. Mm -hmm. Strange college girls. I'm sorry you had to hear it here. <laughs> and that's where the dogs came in, actually. As I you, got, guys, you guys were partying with dogs? No, I, okay. got, a, I got a puppy. Because okay. I was living in a frat house, and I was like, oh, this is I great. Need to, I've got, I'm, I'm already completely irresponsible. Exactly. I, need, exactly. I need to take care of another life. This is, this is a great way to, to walk around campus with this cute little puppy. Pick up chicks, got it. Pick up what chicks kind of and invite them to parties. A pit bull. Okay. Yeah. So I had a pit bull. I have a pit bull. She's still with me now. What's her name? Jasmine. Jasmine. Yeah. She's the best. She's How awesome. old? Ten. Ten now. Yeah. It's yeah. been ten years. Yeah. I got her my second year in the uh, in school. So it's crazy. That's uh, time. Time goes. But yeah, ten years. Uh, I had my dog, and to the dog training thing, my parents said to me, uh, either come home. They weren't too happy or keen with me being the college kid that had a dog, that they had to take care of the dog. And where I, I experience that a lot now, where I meet parents like, oh, this used to be my son's dog, or this used to be my daughter's dog. So, and they have to go to school, so now it's ours. Correct, they have to go to work, or they have to go to school, and now it's our responsibility. So they weren't too happy about that. They basically said, you know, come home and live under, you know, our rules, finish school here, or, you know, we're not going to support you through this partying anymore. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. So I took the option of not getting the support. I dropped out of school. I, or I stopped going to school. I don't even know if there's an official way to drop out or not, so I don't know. I just stopped going to school. And I started looking for work, and one of my friends, um, who, he was living in the apartment complex I was living in at the time, because I had left the frat by the, at this point, left the frat house, uh, and he kind of recommended to me, he was an older guy in law school, he had dogs, we always go walks with our dogs and stuff, and he was like, you should just go walk dogs, man. You know, start doing your own thing and, and figure it out. So I started walking dogs and, you know, he was one of the first people that, you know, once I started doing the dog walking, he was like, hey, you start watching the dog whisperer because he's got, you're walking this many dogs a day now and things are going decently well for you. Take it to the next level. Um, so I started watching the dog whisperer and I was like, man, this guy is, knows what he's talking about. There's a lot of psychology behind it. Lots of communicating with the owners more so mm -hmm. than the dog while there's obviously dog communication involved you need to understand how to tell someone something while they're in their most vulnerable state mm -hmm. because they're crying because their dog just bit their kid or they might need to get rid of this dog or something like that. So I started learning from his shows and from his books and you know, started advertising myself out as a dog trainer. And my first, uh, my first client actually was for dog training, called me and said they needed someone to watch their dog uh, for the weekend, but it's aggressive. And I was like, oh, perfect. This is my time to shine, right? Because this is my my first. I've got an animal that might beat you. <laughs> yeah. and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Perfect. <laughs> exactly. That was, that was basically what went through my head. I was like, sounds great. I was like, oh, cool. Like this will be a great way for me to test my skills and see if what I'm watching on TV can I actually do. What kind of dog was it? It was a pit bull. Okay. Uh, it had bit a few people. It had you know done the whole bite and shake thing, and I, I went in with I had an iPad at the time to make sure I didn't forget anything. So I had like a little presentation to share with the owners and I was like yeah I'll do a free evaluation and if he passes the evaluation or she I think it's a girl dog um, if she passes the evaluation I'll take her in for you know a week while you're out of town um, so I went in there at first you know they had the dog on the leash it tried to rawr, rawr, rawr. I was like okay let's put the dog in the backyard let's have a little chat real quick see where this is coming from so I had my iPad with me I was like all right you wait here I'm gonna go outside and meet your dog because that's how I saw him do it on the show. I was like, oh, okay, this is what this is the way it goes, right? So sounds. I'm like, <laughs> how about you, Drew? But I'm like, this does not sound like a good idea. <laughs> it, it, I wouldn't do it this way anymore. Okay. Uh, this is not how I do it now. But this was just my first. You know, I just jumped into the deep end, right? So I walked out to the backyard. The dog notices a stranger in his yard. I've got my iPad with me. It goes after me. Uh, Eats the iPad. Bumps its nose on the iPad. I just use it as a shield. And then immediately it sat down and looked at me like, wow, no one's ever done that before. No one's ever just stopped as opposed to either try to run away or 
try to wrestle me down or something like that. Um, and I'll Did say, you do that on purpose? Oh yeah, I walked so out there like, purposely with, uh, with the iPad um, to, as like a shield. So, because ideally when you're working with dogs, when you're working on any, anything, you kind of have to get, get the emotions out of the picture, get the fear out of the picture, show the dog, hey, I know what I'm doing here. I know what you're doing here. Let's do this together. Let's hang out, right? So kind of like when you were trying to lure those girls into the parties. Kind of. I know what you're doing here. I know <laughs> what I'm doing here. <laughs> Keep going. Sure. So so from there, I, I saw, you know, I basically saw this, right? I saw the look of ears were back, eyes were soft, you know, tail was relaxed. Like, okay, this is a good sign. I understand the body language. Looped a leash around the dog. Walked the dog around the yard, uh, went into the house. The lady started crying. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe I have my dog. Uh, and then that's when I was like, okay, cool. This is, this is the thing for me. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I found my purpose. So she hired you? So she hired me. Yeah, I mean, she... Do you, do you finish the story where the dog takes a chunk out of your ass? No, actually. Never no. did bite you? No, that one didn't bite me. No. Have you been bit? I have been bit a few times. Ever bad? So uh, nothing terrible, nothing that needed like surgery or stitches or anything. Uh, I would say the worst one uh, was on my middle finger here, breaking up a dog fight. Um, and it was, I would say that the bite wasn't so bad. It was more so, it was the beginning of my career. I was like 21 years old. I didn't know much about first aid or anything like that. So I didn't know really what to do. So I just bandaged it up and- Infection? Oh yeah, it turned, my finger turned green. You're lucky to still have it. I know. Lucky you didn't die. Yeah. My finger turned green and it, it had like little pus bubbles all over in every little hole. And, you know, I bit down on a piece of paper and started, not piece of paper, something, a stick or something, and started poking them and putting the hydrogen peroxide. You? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that now that I've been to. Did you ever go see a doc about that? No, no. My neighbor was actually a, in school to be a doctor. So I talked to him about it and he said, I'm okay. Did he see your finger that was green and full of pus? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. That's gross. That's not okay. It wasn't. Yeah, I would never. Don't do not do that. Don't try this at home. Yeah, for real. So you started the company, started a social media page. You guys got a pretty good following, like 10, 15,000 yeah. followers online. Are the people that follow you looking for tips? Are they looking for, like, is it just they want to see the fun pictures? Do you post content that's helpful? I mean, how many Americans own dogs? Oh, uh, more than have kids. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, I was listening to somebody recently, they said it's the only animal, maybe it was, this might have just been like a whimsical quip, but he said it was the, it's the only animal that chooses to leave its own kind to live with humans, which I think, you know, like, I don't think about it. It's not like cows don't like, yeah, I don't want to be with cows. <laughs> we chain them up, right? And yeah. F fence them or any other animal. It's dogs are like, like my dog came and jumped next, next to me in bed last night. Like yeah. Most animals well, we, we've domesticated them for quite a while, and, you know, we do kind of kidnap them from their litters, if you're getting it from a litter, right? You yeah. kind of go in there, and you're like, oh, I'm just going to take that one. And so it's, it's hard to say if they choose. I don't know. It's a bit, we've just been in the cycle for so long that they love us, and they know that they need us. So hmm. We need them, too, and, sometimes. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. A lot of times. Dogs are better than people. They're good. Yeah. For the most part, they are, unless they're the ones that give you gangrene finger. Even that one was good. That, that one stayed with me till it was gone. So that was one of the dogs. Because in the beginning, too, I started doing, I started rescuing dogs a little bit to, after I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. So I started rescuing dogs and, you know, working with dogs that had issues. And this was one of those dogs. And, and then um, would you find him a home? Uh, yeah, actually, the guy that uh, was working for me adopted that one. Do you ever, so you, like, you said, I don't train dogs, I train their owners, I train people, right? That's like a, Kind of an axiom. I train both, yeah, but dog, yes, most, it's it's mostly the human part of it. Yep. So, like, you get a problematic dog, like this angry pit bull that that uh, the owner was crying. Your first like success mm -hmm. story. It's pretty easy for that dog to revert, no? If the people continue to do the same. Very easy, yeah. Behavior. So, so one of the things I tell people is there's the dog training aspect of it, and then there's the relationship building aspect of it. So, if we just do sit, stay down you know, go to your place, come here. That's all fine and great. But if let's just say you do a boot camp and the dog stays with me and I do all that stuff and then you take the dog home assuming, oh, he was just with Yoni for six weeks. Now let's, you know. Go back to playtime. Yeah, let's have the toys everywhere. Let's leave the door wide open. Let's do all that kind of stuff. Granted, it's not going to go back right off the bat depending on the dog. But 
just like anything, you know, habits require maintenance, training requires maintenance. You need to practice what you what you're learning, otherwise it's going to go away. So, what are the biggest mistakes people make in training dogs or improperly training them or not training them? What are the biggest mistakes? Okay, so the ones that I see are people are very predictable for their dogs. Hmm. So they go into a place where, all right, I'm going to grab the leash and we're putting it on and we're going to the to our walk or we're going to the dog park or we're going to hop in the car and go to this exciting thing. And all these predictable things are always so overly exciting. And then that overexcitement normally turns into bad behavior because that could be jumping, barking, nipping, you know, running out the door. So like when I'm cooking food and I feed my dog as I'm tossing scraps off the cutting board to her and she gets stoked when she hears the cutting board hit the counter. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and, and again, it, every, every dog and every person, everything is going to be different. It's not like it's the worst thing in the world. But it's important to be aware of those things because if you're not aware of it, then that's where it's like, okay, well, I didn't realize that this led to that, that led to that, that led to this, you know, our dog's fighting and now we have to break it up. Hmm. You know, what's interesting. People I think about that have dogs, how, uh, well, not just have dogs, but certain people, how much the dogs mirror the owner's behavior. Like I know a, a couple that have a couple psycho dogs. And the parents or dog owners or people, as soon as you come to the pull, air, pull into the driveway, you hear, shut up, <laughs> shut up, damn it. Yeah. You know, like, Mickey's here. And then like, you know, so then they're like, ah, somebody's here. And then like, their people are yelling, so we should yell. And then they're yep. like, get in your, get in the bedroom. And you just like, you walk up to the front door and you hear the people yelling. And the door and the, is shaking. Yeah, and, and the <laughs> dogs are going nuts. And it's like, let me get a hold of them. And then like, get in there, you son yeah. of a bitch. And it's like, well, it seems like you guys are like, they just think like car, everybody gets psycho. Like yeah. they probably hear a vehicle. and Sure. And then that would be, you know, in my opinion, I guess the next biggest mistake is they don't realize that their energy has so much to do with it. You know, mm -hmm. the energy that you're feeding off of is they're going to, they're going to eat it up and they're going to be like, okay, they're excited. This thing is happening. This must be the trigger for us to also get excited. Let's all go for it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Dogs like your dogs can be terrifying. The one, your story about the one that the pit, the pit. <laughs> yeah. Ball. In that moment, a dog, you're walking, there's a dog down the street from here, uh, dog's at the end of its leash or got off a leash, a dog has confronted you that you weren't expecting. We don't all carry around iPads. Yeah, no, definitely not. Um, so it's kind of uh, one of those things you got to do your best to stay calm, don't run, stand your ground, make yourself bigger, all the same things that you would read in a a book about surviving surviving in the wild when a bear approaches you or something like that it's it's pretty similar they they check you out from a distance unless they're really going for it right i mean if they're really going for it standing your ground and just you know making yourself bigger might so not stop them a dog that's intent on attacking you trained to sure. or or just past or, that point correct. Of, of doing investigation or bluffing yeah well some of them are are so far beyond being a natural dog that they just think every human they see, they have to go after hmm. that the instincts of these are humans. Let me smell them. Isn't even, doesn't even exist anymore, hmm. you know, or it exists, but it's just so far, you know, back in the brain that they're not accessing it. And they're just in that zone of, okay, I just got to go for this thing, okay. human or dog or rabbit or whatever it might be. So if the bluffing doesn't work and a dog, proceeds to attack you any like just uh candid advice for the viewer listeners uh it's, you know it's definitely a, a dangerous slippery slope i've i've heard some people say uh to use jujitsu chokes on dogs to kind of have them pass out so that way you can you know give your give yourself some time to, to do that I mean, I, i've never done it so I wouldn't, I don't know that I would necessarily. You could probably do a guillotine on a dog. Yeah, they, they, people do those. I've, there's this one, I forget what his name is, and it was a while back that I heard it, but um, he uses that to break up dog fights. And, he guillotines him? Uh, I don't know if it's a, I think he goes behind rear naked, okay. chokes him, and, you know, just because they're. Go to sleep. Go to sleep, yeah. I mean, it, it makes it uh, safer for everybody at that point. Um, you know, if, uh, sometimes putting your foot out, and they, same way that they bonked his, the dog bonked his head or nose on the iPad. They could bonk, not that you're going to kick the dog to hurt it, right? But creating some sort of barrier mm -hmm. um, to make it happen. And then the other thing would be, depending on the 
situation. You know, when I go on walks, usually I keep a little can of compressed air with me. Um, and most, and most just like animals, the stuff you clean your keyboards with. Yeah, yeah. So that there's, there's, they make specific ones for animals that are called. Uh, I think they're called pet correctors. Hmm. Um, but they have all sorts of different. Is it, is it a real high pressure? So like eh. it's a little bit higher. So, yeah, and, and the noise it, it kind of sounds. You know, the on the description it talks about how it sounds like a hissing snake. So most predatory animals are going to be like, okay, we want to stay away from that thing. Have you ever used it? I have. Yeah. Oh yeah. Work pretty good. It works pretty well. That so that in my opinion, if you are in a place that you are pretty consistently encountering off-leash dogs, um, get on Amazon and buy one of those suckers and have they, they make holsters for them and everything. <laughs> you know, but it's just it's it's a it's just compressed air. Okay, and it just goes and the dog is like, what the heck was that? And they usually back off. Okay, and but, if they don't, and if they don't, then you you know, there, there's always that time where they're gonna. Some dogs will attack that also. So, I, I'd say one in every ten dogs. So go on Amazon and buy one of those. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I still recommend it. Yeah, but but one out of ten will probably go for it too. So okay. so you you know, but most of them will be surprised by the fact that you stood your ground. You kept you kept your cool. That's the most important thing. You're not sitting there like stop, or, you know. You're not yelling at the dog. You're not you know doing all that kind of stuff. Um, you're just, just keeping cool and doing your best to kind of startle them away without changing your energy. I see. This is why the Irish have shillelaghs. Shillelaghs. I don't even know what that is. It's a frick, <laughs> it's a walking stick that's really a weapon. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Walking sticks can, can be super uh, effective. Absolutely. And when I, I have actually, right now, I have a St. Bernard that at my house that um, bites people. Oh. 200 pound dog. So I had the owner. Now, now my setup is very different. I've got a nice dog run, dog yard. So I had the owners drop the dog off. He put the dog in the yard. We had a little chat. I was like, all right, see you later. I'm going to do this without you here just to make my life easier, right? Because in the beginning, stages the dog is going to also be protective of the owner because the owner's energy is going to be there too so any energy that's in the room yeah what is happening what's about to happen to yoni yeah. is he about to get bit well if you're thinking that i don't need you i don't need you in the room right now yeah uh, i'll bring you in once i've worked with the dog and developed a bond um, but i'll walk in you know i've got a little pooper scooper i walk in with the pooper scooper and just kind of create my little force field and the dog's like what the heck this guy's just walking around here with a shield so that dog, you good with him now? Oh yeah, we're best buds now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why was he so angry? Uh, I wouldn't say he was angry. He just antisocial. I think that's the main thing. Is people go? There's this idea that we have to socialize our dogs with every human, and they have to meet like a thousand people while they're puppies. But what people forget to realize is that they have to meet them properly. So imagine if you met a bunch of people and all they did was you know pinch your cheeks and pick your nose and slap your ass and do all that kind of stuff. Right. Get the hell away from me. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, so, so it gets to a point to where some, and some people will be fine with it too. You know, it's not like everybody that in, uh, experiences that is going to be, you know, I hate people stay away from me. Um, but a lot of them will. And a lot of dogs are, are, I, at least in my opinion, a lot of dogs get to a point to where they're just so overwhelmed with affection and, and, and human affection. Okay. So it's a, it's a difference, human right. affection, dog affection. So they're so overwhelmed with human affection that they just don't know how to interact with people. Um, and they only are comfortable interacting with the people that they've been with long enough. Interesting. To be comfortable, basically. Hmm. American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> how many times did you compete on that? Uh, a couple times, I think twice. Maybe eh, twice, yeah. A couple years back. How long did you train before you competed? Uh, about a year. Actually, my, I, I built a course in my yard. Uh, back in the day, my old, I've moved a bunch, but I had a course in my yard and that was also a really cool experience. So I got to meet, you know, other people that were working out and training and met some good friends that some are still on the show and some, some are, you know, some are still just great friends that we go climbing together and, you know, fitness is a great way to connect with people. So, so we'll come back to that. So you, before that were into like Cirque du Soleil, circus, what am I trying to say? Like performer, acrobatics. acrobatic. Yeah, 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 acrobatics yeah, yeah, is a good, yeah. good one yeah, word yeah, way yeah, to put yeah, it. Yeah, 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 I mean, I did. Uh, Exotic dancer. Yeah, I, I cheerleaded for a little bit, actually. Too. I believe it. Yeah, I did some I cheer. I believe it. Yeah. I said, our team is dynamite. Our team is dynamite. <laughs> your not, team is not dynamite. That kind, too not that bad kind. your fuse won't light. 
interesting. I didn't know that one. Maybe I too was a cheerleader. I think so. That's, a, that's a good. That's good. No, not it was in more, college, high school. Uh, it was. It was. I or was just you and your buddies. I was in college, but it was just at a gym. So okay. they they do like um, just competitions, like mostly. Tum- it's like sports cheer, not ready. Not like okay. No, we didn't talk. We just we just flipped and we just flipped and you just jumped did the tumbling and, and tossed chicks in the air and okay. you know stuff like that. So we just did the tumbling and I mainly did that because I I wanted to. As a kid, I was really into flipping and, and, you know, running around and skateboarding and all that kind of stuff. So I got, uh, when I was in college, I was like, okay, how can I continue doing this stuff? And that was really the only, like, organized way without being on a gymnastics team, which I wasn't good enough for. So uh, I wasn't at a place where I was, like, oh, on the high bar and on the rings and all that stuff. I was just tumbling still. So mm-hmm. um, so I just joined a team to kind of keep that going, and it was fun. And, you know, and well, then... Go ahead. Yeah, and then, so then from there... You know, I just realized that I'm not going to, first of all, I'm not going to cheer forever, right? So I'm not going to do this. I'll uh, continue this for that long. It was, it was a fun couple of years of doing that. Um, and then I was like, all right, let's try this ninja thing. Um, because I had the, like, body control of a, you know, a tumbler. And, you know, I was like, oh, well, you need to be able to climb. So I started climbing. And then I was like, oh, well, all this like, stuff like, really hurts. Okay. Because um, it, it, it's, you overuse a lot of muscles when you're doing one thing repetitively over and over and over. And if you're not properly mobilized you're not flexible enough you're not strong enough in different ranges of motion you know you get hurt pretty quickly so mm-hmm. I, I tore a few tore a, a finger pulley that went all the way up into my shoulder um grabbing uh grabbing and, Ju- and like jumping and grabbing yeah so kind of like what you were showing me um earlier trying to catch those it was actually on one of those uh balls so you were going to jump i grab. jump i caught and then when i caught i let go of one arm and the other one stayed on and just dropped from here to and there and just <laughs> Yep. So you had surgery on that? I didn't. It it did not uh, get that bad, but it was bad enough to where I couldn't use the arm for you know a little bit. That's no good. It was no good. So then I then I got into kind of learning all of the you know with on on my spare time because as a you know now I'm a lot busier than I used to be. But you know as a as young business owner, some days you don't have work. You know so. On those days I didn't have work, I was like, well, what can I do to make my life better? What can I do to be a better human? And that was learn how to make my body feel better. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the better my body felt, the more I felt like I can provide my services and provide myself to to my business and to my life and to my friends and family. So That's a good way to think about it. Yeah. You went to school for the circus stuff. Yeah, I went to a, it it was like a weekend school Mm -hmm. where we stayed, you know, I did a couple of them where I, you know, one was in Thailand. Uh, and then I went to France a couple of times where um, one of my, you know. Where does somebody even find a school like this? <laughs> True, have you ever just well, like on the internet seen a school yeah. for circus performers? I can't say I punched that in Google. No. <laughs> um, so it was, you know, I got into uh, hand balancing because I saw uh, when I started doing the like gymnastic style training again, mm-hmm. you know, and, and all of it is from, and I just learned from the internet, YouTube channels and and uh, Instagram and stuff like that. So I purchased a few programs online and then some of these programs had, you know, the models for their programs were circus performers. I was okay. like, okay, well, how do I get to their level? Instead of doing the program that they're modeling for, let me just talk to them. Yeah. So I, I kind of cut through the, um, the barrier there and, and just found the guys that were doing circus stuff and they do online coaching. So I did a little bit of online coaching with one of them for a while and then um you know went to uh went to thailand he had like a weekend or a week-long like workshop seminar type deal kind of like what you do mm-hmm. people come to him you know they they just learn handstand for a week how to stand on your hands in different ways and different shapes and one arms two arms you know flexibility just Im- immersed into it fully immersed into it on an island yeah so i want to go do that it was awesome yeah it was really awesome and then um and then the same. Did guy. you have like a huge explosive handstand growth from a weekend? Um, I would say that that's not realistic. No, it's it's a very. I mean, there was a lot of growth in the fact that I learned how much I could handle, and then I learned that the progress that you make in any skill is is going to be like up and then kind of stagnate and then up and then kind of stagnate and up and kind of stagnate. So I think when I went to that weekend, I was at the place where I was at a kind of a slow progress. Hmm. So I feel like if you were newer and you went to something like that, you could definitely get a lot of progress real quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but at the level that I was at, I didn't get like that much gains from it besides the fact that I was like, okay, well, when I go home, now I know how to kind of schedule my, my practice and, and schedule my training. Do you use handstands a lot in your life? Yeah, yeah. Talk so. about that. Just, I mean, a lot, a lot of folks are probably like, what in the shit is this guy talking I about? I have a lot of time on my hands, you know? So, you, you, no, what's the benefit? What's the benefit of being able to walk on one's hands? Uh, like, well, why would a guy go all the way to Thailand to walk on their hands better? You didn't like the feet that the good Lord gave you to walk on? You well, think you know something better? <laughs> good, good one. Yeah, I know. So, I don't walk on them that often, actually. Mm. It's more just balancing. Just balance, okay. Yeah, it's more just balancing. So those are also, like, you would think, oh, handstands, you learn to walk on your hands. Um, you, I do know how to, I just don't do that often. It's kind of a way to get all the, you know, stuff out of my head. And because if you, if you, especially when you get into the more advanced skills, you're not really able to think about anything else. So it's a meditative practice for sure. you. Yeah. Just like I think anything could be. Same with the dogs. Like when I'm mm -hmm. out there with the aggressive dog, if I think about anything else, you know, my chances of me getting bit are higher. Mm -hmm. And then the more advanced you get, the more that I can, you know, okay, I'm on two hands now. I can talk to Mick or I can, you know, think about did I get my taxes paid on time or, you know, what's my next appointment coming in? But then when I start to transition to the point towards like, all right, I'm going to do a more advanced shape or something that requires more focus because I need to go onto one hand or... Something like that, then mm -hmm. it's you know the the thought has to go away, or else you're falling over. I like that. So it's very much like yoga or tai chi or many other body practices. Sure. Yeah. Or jujitsu that breath. we'll be doing later. Correct. Yeah. Breath. Yeah. Find your breath. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I think that the art of anything is find your breath, right? Like even with the dogs, if I'm out there like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna lose something. Yeah. As opposed to all right. I'm out here. Let's do this. Chill out. Chill. You know? You've been in business now for 10 years? Ten, this is my 10th year in business, yep. Congratulations on that. Thank you. We talk with a lot of folks on the podcast that are entrepreneurs, uh, self-made. Uh, it's t difficult to be in business, especially one that's like, I don't want to say fringe, but um, it's not... You're not selling shoes or something like that. And how do you grow a business in that space? You're right. No, it's it's not easy. I there, I spent many years where there was a couple of like good years in the beginning, or in, sorry, in the beginning there was some not so good years, and then there was a couple years after that where it got a little better. And then since I was still pretty young, I was, and I'm still pretty young, but I was younger. And I was like, I'm old enough to be your dad. Possibly, yeah, possibly. Yeah, I could have been in eighth grade making babies. It's true, I guess so. Yeah. So, so yeah. So it's it's not easy. Um, I at one point was I like rented a warehouse to try to grow, and I went as far as living in the warehouse because. So it's going to be like a, a big indoor space for dog correct, training. Yeah. So I I tried to do that, and I ended up getting in over my head because I was I needed to hire staff, I needed to have the overhead, I needed to do marketing, I needed to do this, I needed to do that. Too I had, much. It was too much for me to handle it. I was thinking I was twenty two when I when I did that twenty three. Um, and you know, thankfully I was still committed to it. I wasn't like, I'm just going to give up, screw this. And I think especially my clients, they saw that I was, you know, really passionate about it. And, and they saw that I was able to share what I was sharing in a understandable way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had, uh, one of my clients was very, very wealthy and he was basically like, Hey man. Uh, him and his wife, they were basically like, hey, this is, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be, they saw my bed in the corner of the warehouse and they were like, you shouldn't be living like this. You know, let's, let's get you out of here. Let's get you in a house. Let's lower your expenses. Let's, you know, help you get restarted essentially. Um, which was awesome. Very grateful for them. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah. So I think again, going back to, to the beginning, what I said earlier, what I said about college was just connecting with people, I think is the my most valuable skill that I learned. And uh, so I was able to connect with them and obviously I was able to connect with you to be here. So that was awesome. So one thank, thing leads thank to you. another. Exactly. So one thing always leads to another. You never know what you're going to get yourself into if you are just nice to people mm -hmm. and you listen to them and you know, you help them however you can. Lure them back for a pong party. Yeah, there you go. 
<laughs> you still do work with that couple? Uh, I have a couple times. Uh, I'm still in touch with them. I, I'm constantly sharing where I am and, you know, kind of sending them videos and pictures of my new place. And they're super happy for me. So, so that brings up like a really good point that I think a lot of people that I know that have success... Uh, talk about and there's plenty of people I know that are successful that don't talk about it There's the people that are like I had a lucky break Which is literally what you just said somebody was kind to you when they didn't have to be correct and helped you. Yep, and Not for no reason. It wasn't like hey kid. I see course, you're starving out here on the street Let me give you a bowl <laughs> of soup, but they saw something in you so they helped you and I'm sure there was I'm sure They didn't just say here's a bunch of money have fun and I, I don't want to know the particulars, but I'm sure there was something structured there. Yeah, well, they saw me working hard. Yeah. And, and they saw that I wasn't just, you know, like you said, someone that's on the street that's like, oh, just give me, help me, somebody help me, you know? Right, 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 they right. They saw that I was willing to do it myself, and they were like, you know, he basically went through my whole thing. Was, he, he looked at my finances, and I was like, all right, well, you're spending all your money on your overhead. Let's get your overhead out of here, and then and then we'll talk, you know? So once the overhead went away, um, and again, not all completely away, obviously, I had to still pay rent for house and Sure. You know, living expense and all but that But somebody stuff. helped you with some basic business sense Correct. stuff. It's that something that I never had. And, and maybe I could have learned it in college if I went to class, but I didn't learn it in college. So, <laughs> <laughs> Because I was driving around campus trying to score chicks, right. mom. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, mom. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, it was definitely, it was definitely a good, good experience. And I learned a lot from them. And, you know, they, you know, when you, when you run a, a big business like like he was running and is still running it's uh you know it's it's they you you, you learn things what and, are some other bits of advice you'd give to entrepreneurs people trying to start out because um i've never slept in a warehouse but i've slept in a hayloft uh -huh. so pretty close yeah um, i don't know what's what's harder right? this was probably worse it was february it was unheated i'm in chicago land so that was cold i was yeah. i was in a swamp coolered uh, warehouse in the summer of Arizona. So. Okay, so it was 95? 120. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I, pr I, I mean, this was below freezing. No, yeah, I, I... I'm thinking I probably would take the below freezing over the 120. Maybe. That might be worse. Maybe. That might be worse. It all was, my coconut oil would be completely liquid. Like, oh, yeah, my yeah. coconut oil was all liquid. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess I would say, you know, don't rush anything. Cause mm. that's, I think that's where I, where I messed up the most was I was like, oh, something is going well. Let's take it to the next level real quick. Before you had like the knowledge or skill set to, to take it to, to the next to level. To build on it. Correct. Yeah, I see that all the time with people that. And they oftentimes you do that because you think you're doing the right thing. Like I got, I got this ball. I got to run it down yeah. field hard. I got to, I got to keep going. Yeah, and that's what I felt. Up. And and you know, mom, she told me, you know, don't uh, don't go too quickly. But I was like, no, I got this. I'm ready. Uh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> so, Your parents, business people. Uh, my dad is a, a general contractor, and okay. I guess kind of watching him grow. You know, watching, growing up, watching him run his own business probably had a, a lot to do with it also where i was mm -hmm. like i'm gonna just work my butt off and mm -hmm. you know keep going and then also that's the other thing is just you know you gotta you're gonna have to work hard it's gonna not, it's not gonna be like oh i'm gonna start this business and now i'm an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. you know i got an instagram page and people are gonna start buying my services or or buying my products or whatever it is that you're doing you know there's gonna be uh those times where they do buy and there's gonna be those times where they don't buy and i would say that after what is it, 10 years in business now? The past two years have been the only years that I've been able to actually save money and, you know, do other it's taken things. taking you a decade to get to the point where you're... Yeah, do other things with my money besides live, mm -hmm. survive. You know, I can actually go, go to Thailand and, you know... Learn to walk on my hands even though I have two good feet or yeah. whatever. You know, actually, I, I, uh, you, you bring me to a couple weeks ago, I, I uh, hurt my calf. And so you did walk around on your hands? I was walking around on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking around on my hands. I did a little one legged. God, thank God I went to Thailand. <laughs> spent that five grand to get there. Exactly, to... exactly. It was, and it was it was super, you know, it sucked. It hurt. I couldn't put my foot on the ground. So I was I, I used it. I took advantage of my handstands. That's funny. Yeah, because I had to walk I still had dogs at the house and I had no I had nobody that was uh scheduled to help me. So I was like, all right, well, while you're not here, I'm gonna have to go get these dogs out. So I Stood on your own two hands. Waddled my way over. Yeah. Instead so, of bootstrapped, you glove strapped it. Yeah. Or exactly. some such thing. 
So it worked out and the, you know, worked out. And then the other thing would be, I'll, you know, it's something that I need to work on still, just, you know, take time, take time for yourself. and Talk about that. That's where the handstands came in. And that's where going to your classes, like, you know, your classes and trying to be, trying to always just be a better human in my mind means that you're able to give whatever you have without burning yourself out. So it gets, I've, and I've done it many times where I just go to, you know, and for example, last year I had no days where I did anything for myself. Hmm. Granted, there was less to do, so I, my mind was like, all right, fine, this year I'm just going to buckle down and just do nothing but work. But it, it, it was exhausting and it burns you out. And, you know, I, I didn't do as many handstands. And I was like, oh, why don't I go stand on my hands for, you know, an hour, not an hour, like on my hands, but... Go do some practice. Yeah. Go do some practice. You know, go go find something that I want to learn, which is how I, you know, I, I started uh, getting into shooting a little bit. And a couple of friends, uh, one one of my friends in particular, one of my first bosses when I was 14 years old, he's like, hey, you should check out this carry trainer guy. And I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. He does courses. Smart awesome. Smart guy. Yeah. Smart guy. Smart guy. What's um, his name? Paul. Hey, Paul. Thank you. Yeah. You're a good guy, Paul. Um, and he's still, still uh, to this day, I mean, he was, I've known him for, Almost 16 years now, so he's uh, one of the people that also, he runs his own business in, in uh, California, do? summer camp. Oh, cool. So I used to be a camp counselor. So I was always into, and even even as a camp counselor, I was always into like, hey, what's up? I'm Yoni, let me. I hope you weren't trying to get any girls drunk at summer camp. <laughs> well, we won't talk about that. Not the campers. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> She would she would drop me off at summer camp parties after camp was over. Yeah, adults, for everybody listening, not the kids. Yeah, the adults, adults, yeah. of course, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a uh, it was I mean and even that shaped me to where I am today because it was like hey I got to work hard and when I'm mm -hmm. at work and I gotta you know do what I gotta do. So I think that's a big I've talked about this a lot over the years and it's something that I've got to continue to apply focus to. Like Drew, I know will work like freaking 60, 80 hours, but you have to be able to do other things. But I know people, like I was just with some friends of ours, this guy was telling me, he's like, I love work. Like it's all I want to do. And if you truly do love that and it's not just being driven to make more money or succeed and you're enjoying yourself, then why not keep grinding it out? But when people say they don't have, I don't have time to do jujitsu, I don't have time to go for a walk, I don't have time to prepare good meals at home mm -hmm. right? then well like that's a little bit whacked out like that's not cool like if you're just yeah oh definitely and i and i catch myself mm -hmm. doing that sometimes especially because i you know now i do i mean i've done and i'm doing like training camp for dogs where they're staying with me mm -hmm. so it gets to a point to where you know i've got this many dogs in my house i've got appointments throughout the day i've got to bounce from appointment to dogs so this that i'm like oh i forgot to eat today or you know i need to go just get pick up some food and Thankfully, I live now in a place where there's some good places to pick up food, and it's not just like junk food that I can grab. But you know, before it would have been take care of yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So take care of yourself. It's important. What else you got? Man, what else do I got? I don't know. Work, work hard. Take care of yourself. Don't uh, work hard. Take care of yourself. Don't buy, buy war bonds. Yeah, sure. No, I'm just <laughs> I don't have any of those. No. <laughs> I don't even think they sell war bonds. That was World War II. Yeah, fair enough. I was just making a bad joke. <laughs> Made me laugh. I'm glad. <laughs> you met uh, Caesar? I met Caesar, yeah. That, that's actually, so we kind of went all over the place. I went, um, so when I did that, that dog training thing in the beginning with the, with the aggressive pit bull, a um, couple weeks after that, they, he started doing a course um, so, you know, similar to what you do, week long. Uh, teach instruct. I think I saw you're teaching instructors now too. Mm -hmm. So he te his course was, I think it was like six days six grand, you know, learn to be a dog trainer or just come with your dog. Um, at that point I had no, I had like a hundred dollars in the bank account. I was not anywhere near able to afford that. And he posted on his Facebook, which, you know, now personally I try to stay away from social media as much as possible, but I also try to get on there to see things that are educational and, and learn from. So, cause there's some good and bad everywhere. So he posted on his Facebook that there is a sweepstakes to if you donated to his foundation, uh, you can be entered into that sweepstakes. Oh, cool. So I donated uh, 20 bucks out of the $100 in my bank account, and I just forgot about it. And like a month later, 
uh, some lady called me and was like, hey, we're calling from the Caesar Foundation. And I was like, at this point, I'd already started. I was like watching people's dogs at my house. I had dogs in the other room. You know, I was like, um, are you, is this a joke? Hello, who is this? How can I help you? Like, are you trying to buy dog training? Are you trying to sell me something? Because, you know, when you start a business, you get all these calls. I'm sure. like, hey, you want, do you want to, uh, you know, whatever. Sure, all the junk Buy calls. advertising yeah, 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 yeah. or whatever it is. Um, and so, oh, no, 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 this is not, we're not trying to sell you anything. This is actually, uh, I forgot what her name was. I think it was Jill or something like that. Um, but this is, you know, so-and-so from uh, the Caesar Milan Foundation. And, and we want to... Uh, see if you're qualified because they had picked a few people out of the hat so they, they wanted to make sure that they were getting somebody know, that wasn't a waste of time and sure would be bad pr and correct all correct so they wanted to see what you know find out my story see where i was see why i wanted to do it all that good stuff um asked me for some references so you know shout out to paul again because paul was a reference for that one um paul. <laughs> so so uh so yeah, so they interviewed me and like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll get back to you in a couple of days and let you know what we think after we speak to the people. I gave them, uh, you know, a couple of clients to talk to also. Um, and they called me and they basically said, hey, you know, we want to choose you because we think that, you know, if you come to this versus, you know, Sally who has a bad dog that just wants to learn from Caesar, you'll be able to, you know, yeah. bloom and, and help more people mm -hmm, than mm -hmm. just this one person that's coming to learn from him. You're coming to learn from him and then you're going to go teach it. So. So I, uh, they're another really lucky thing, but again, it's like it, I was still working and pushing and. And you took 20 bucks, you took 20% 20 20 of what of you had savings, and, yeah. and invested it. I mean, basically you were playing craps. Yeah. And, but you still like planted a seed that. Correct. Yeah, that was cool. I mean, I don't know if everybody in that position should like enter a sweepstakes, but. I, tr point, I so trusted that I was going to get a dog to walk the next day that'll make that $20 back. I think the other part of that, though, is sometimes people play it so safe that they never put their foot in the water or get anywhere where they're going to make it happen. Like, ah, you know, I got to get all these things perfect. Man, I'm going to take 20 bucks out of my last hundo and yep. put it on black. Let's go. Let's see what happens. I did. That's basically what I did. And, uh, you know, it turned into a $6,000 course, so. And did they fly you out there and everything? They, yeah, they paid for me to go out there. They paid for my stay. They paid for everything. I just had to pay, uh, I guess, the taxes on it, um, which was cool. I mean, did you um, or do you still stay in touch with that organization? Not much. No, no. Um, I, ha I haven't spoke to them in a while. I know that, I mean, they're doing their thing and they have their courses and they're busy. There was times where they... They didn't necessarily contact me like personally, but it's like they sent out emails to the people that they know and like, hey, you know, we're we're building our team up and all that. If you want to work on the ranch or something okay. like that, you can apply. They, you know, basically, you can apply to work for us. And um, I was like, That's you know, a pretty freaking lucky break though. Thinking about the totality of how many people he reaches through discovery or learning oh, whatever yeah. channel that he's on, and although sometimes a lot of uh, we've done s stuff like that before where we would think thousands of people would apply or enter and only hundreds do. Cause I think people are like, eh, I'm not going to Yeah. So they said 30,000 people entered. Wow. And that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah. So 30,000 people entered, they picked six, they interviewed six and then they picked me. Yeah. Wow. Maybe, uh, maybe you've got like a, maybe I should hang out with you more. That's, I wouldn't mind. You that's know? pretty lucky. Yeah. You got you got rich guys buying you stuff. <laughs> you got Paul. Your mom still loves you despite all of the My partying. My dad too. My dad I too. Do. Yeah, but your dad, he's okay with the party and stuff with the chicks. <laughs> That's my boy. <laughs> That's my boy. Uh, I'm just joking, Dad. <laughs> your parents are going to see this and they're going to go, who the hell? Maybe they're not going to see this anymore. We'll find out. I'm going to be. I'm going to be. Broad, <laughs> I'm going to be broadcasting this all over the internet. <laughs> I think I, I think that there's some just just talk like some of these things I didn't know about you. I think that the the takeaway like I get is you have to like you got to take what's in front of you, you know, because like if you don't, you just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Like that's how people end up closing shop and never getting anywhere. Yeah. You kind of got to take it. Like all right, that's that's not the fish I wanted, but I caught it and I'm hungry. I got to eat it. Yep. And I get the line back in the water. If you're a fisherman, there's the analogy. Yeah. But you got to gotta take what's there. Oh, yeah. I love analogies. I mean, that's exactly. You got to do, you know, uh, one, one big takeaway from me from your course is what's important now. What's in front of you? What do you have to deal with? Deal with it. I thought you were going to say a dick joke, but. I got a lot of those too, but. 
Lay one on me. Let me hear one. <laughs> I, I don't act. Ah, come on. <laughs> I don't have any dick jokes. Yoni and a dick walked into a bar. That's all I got. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the, the jokes that you were sharing just went right by me, and I was all about the information and the knowledge, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're taken. Taking dick joke <laughs> notes. I wasn't taking that many notes, though. No. no. I've never been a good note taker. I'm not a great note taker either. I can't even read them. Yeah. My handwriting's crap. Yeah, take no I, I like notes, but yeah. All right, you said you don't use social media, but you've got thousands of followers online. Yeah, well, I, I post, so yeah, I post some tips here and there. I post for the owners of the dogs that have their dogs at my place. So. When their dogs are at my place, like, hey, your dog is doing well, your dog is healthy, look at what your dog is learning, that kind of stuff. And then in there, naturally, I just sprinkle tips that are helpful to people that are just at home working with their dog. Mm. I started doing, I think it was a couple of years, I tried to start doing it. And, you know, again, I've just been like starting it over and making it better, which I'm trying to make it a lot better now. I've got an online program that I offer that people are subscribed to and with that program is more like systematized of, or whatever the word I'm looking for, the system of my approach to training versus if you were just on my page, you'll see, you know, some motivational things that are going to, you know, you'll wake up in the morning like, oh, that's nice that he said that. And, I like to walk on my hands. The sun yeah, is Yeah, you know, it's balance and the sun is good. Get, so wait, get somebody can to buy a monthly program. Correct, yeah. So they go to balancing, pause, training.com dogtraining.com yeah balancing pause dogtraining.com and there's like a button they can click on to buy the correct to subscribe subscription. to the monthly subscription what do um, they get out of it uh they get there is i have a four phase program that i offer that is four phases fit you know i could talk about them real quick well if you, you might want. as well because it tells us a little bit about whether or not sure. you know what you're doing sure sure so phase one is all about clearing up the communication between human and dog and okay. understanding what things most people don't understand about dogs and what to look for, what kind of reactions they give off of triggers and, you know, what things we perceive as perceive as cute, but could be potentially harmful in the future. Mm. Um, and then phase two is learning about how to master the leash, you know, using leash protocols and how to teach your dog to walk around with you properly on a leash and not to jump on people and pull and, you know, lunge at other dogs and stuff like that. Um, some obedience stuff is in phase two, like sit and down and, you know, stay and, go to your bed and all that. Um, and then phase three starts to learn to, uh, you start to do the, learn the fundamentals of off leash training. So getting your dog to, in, you know, you talked about it earlier with your dog, we use, I use remote collars and it's a way to communicate with a dog that's a hundred yards away from you mm -hmm. or, you know, potentially about to run into a street or anything like that. So it's, it's something that I don't use right away because again, you have to first understand and, and build into it and build a good relationship with the dog so that they aren't just like, oh my God, did you just, shock me what's going on here um they're like oh, okay cool like we're friends and this is a feeling that i feel and it must be coming from you and you know we're having a conversation um and then phase four just kind of brings it all together and you know gets dogs to a point where you know you take your advanced off-leash training into the real world and you know you go on a kind of shows you how i would teach them different tricks and you know some agility stuff and um the things that are more on the surface cool to look at but not as i wouldn't i would say they're not as like beneficial as like the other stuff like phase one through three is like the most important parts for most people because most people aren't going to be you know i don't, don't want to say most people but a lot of people aren't going to be taking their dogs with them everywhere they go and sure. and going to outdoor patios and going into the woods where they might see a bear or something like that but yeah, yeah. um phase four well there's no bears in my video uh phase four kind of helps you get to that point to where you can be in the middle of the woods and you know not be worried that your dog is going to chase the the deer down and they're going to stay with you even if they're off the leash. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people can go to the website and subscribe to that if they have dogs. Correct, yeah. What are some things that people don't know about you that you would like people to know? Or, you know, go with that first. Okay, I, I, it's, it's hard. I think that people know a lot about me, honestly. Not what I asked you, it's, uh... What do people not know about you that you'd like them to know? Please tell me something bizarre. I'm just kidding. I, yeah, it's got to be something. Everybody knows everything about you. Most things about me, yeah. Tell me something about you that I don't know. I, I, th I think I shared a lot of it. I, I'm no. a pretty open book, you know. No, no. There's something else hiding. What's, what's it's a hard it? question. Do you do art? I don't do art. Do you do music? 
Um, randomly, I play the piano. Oh yeah. Not very good. Okay. New to it. Uh, this this past year, I've been just trying to learn. The past couple of years, so I'm just trying to learn new skills. So. Speak other languages. Uh, a, a little bit of Hebrew, a little bit of Spanish. Okay. I guess those are things people don't know about me. You yeah. got a girlfriend? No girlfriend. Boyfriend? No boyfriend. Okay. <laughs> Do you want a girlfriend or boyfriend? I would like a girlfriend one day. Yeah, sure. Okay. When it when it when it happens, it happens. I'm not. Right. A, I don't not like the rush. Yeah. Trying to keep the options open. Yeah. Whatever happens, happens. You know. Okay, I get that. What's your What's your long term goals with the training business? How like how far do you want to take it? Uh, anything Please. else? Yeah. So the long term goals. Uh, I've been kind of bouncing around in my head because I'm at that stage where. I either grow it and I start hiring different people to help train dogs that are at my house slash potentially become trainers with the people. Um, and I'm still not 100% sure if I want to do it, but that's probably where my head is at, where I want to be able to provide my service to more people because right now I'm at capacity to where I can't take more than I can handle. That's a big challenge with owner-operator businesses. Like the business isn't the business, the business is you. Correct. So you go out of town, there's no revenue. You go out, get sick, there's no revenue. You want to take a break, there's no revenue. Correct. So that's, and that's, I think, I know for me, that was like an ego-driven thing at different points in my life. Not so much with carry trainer, but like in other businesses, like this is me. I don't want somebody else representing yeah. it. And it's like, well, now all you've done is just pigeonhole yourself where you're screwed yeah you lock yourself in a little box yeah 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 and the, so yeah so that's where i'm at now and and i i definitely do want it to grow and you know again provide excuse me pro provide my services to more people and and also be able to help people live a life that they want to live whether that be with you know training dogs or you know working with me and mm -hmm. and me being able to like right now i have one guy that helps me out um, and he helps me out a lot and he's actually at the house right now uh, working the dogs and making sure they're all fed and watered and safe and cool You know, he stays there whenever I'm gone. So um, when I went to your classes, he was there So he's he's super helpful and you know, it feels good to know that I'm providing a job for that guy. Yeah um, For John. His name is John. He's awesome. Thanks, John. Thanks, John um, so so John's great and you know, I, I again, I think that there is still the ego part though and I need to get it out of there where it's like, oh, well, are these people gonna be able to do it as good as me and are, this, are, are my customers still gonna be happy with well, the product, you're teaching, with the if service? You're, if you're doing the teaching that you think you Correct, they should be able working, to be doing yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Just give them a free access to your online course. That's, that is something that I do do. Yeah. Yes. Do you do any kind of like seminars? Can people hire you? Like if somebody's got like, um, a uh, group of dudes in a neighborhood that all have dogs. Like, would you come do a seminar or uh, I haven't like a done, pet store? Or? Sure, yeah, I, have, I haven't done it. Uh, I've done it once. I haven't done it recently. Um, I would. I don't think I wouldn't do it. I'd be definitely open to it. Um, so, yeah, I would. So somebody could have you come out, do seminar on dog training, dog ownership, yep. bettering those lines of communication between dog and owner. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and, even, and even another thing that I actually... Uh, another part of the business that I would like to, I definitely know that I want to potentially grow and, and start would be a, you know, training trainers and teaching people how to, you know, whether they're younger kids getting out of college or dropping out of college like I did and they want to start their own business or people that are already trainers that want to know how to make it, mm -hmm. make it work better for them, whatever they're doing and however they're doing it. So um, seminars like that could definitely be helpful as well. Train instructors. All right, give me three things people that own dogs can do to make better lives for their dogs and themselves. Cool. Uh, number one would be to be less predictable because it makes you more relevant. Check it out, I'm over here. No, I'm not. Like that? Like, <laughs> not like that. No. no, so an example would be... You're not eating today. <laughs> uh, maybe you're eating in a different spot of the house today. Oh. Right? Or maybe I'm going to grab the leash and I'm not going to put it on you right away. I'm just going to watch a movie or read a book or, you know watch Carrie Trainer's YouTube videos while I have the leash around my shoulder. And most people think, oh, you're torturing the animal. Correct, but what you're doing is you're actually making yourself more relevant because the dog, at, at this point, the, the leash is a trigger for- This is the same thing that you should be doing with these girls too. Like, you think you're getting a ring? You ain't getting no ring. There you go. I'm going to do a podcast. Exactly. Yeah. 
Date, so, maybe we'll do another date. Maybe. I, I got to go. <laughs> Talk to you later. So, so that, that, I think, is honestly one of the, so that, the biggest, easiest changes you can do right off the bat. That Put the toys like away. That against everything everybody normally says because they're like, well, he's got to eat every day at five and five or whatever. To t like, he's got to do it. And if we don't, then we're bad dog owners. You're sure. saying... I'm saying the opposite, complete yeah. opposite, absolutely. Okay. I think that the common knowledge is that-, that Is that co like common practice in your field or is that something indicative to just you and- I don't, I don't know. I think that I, I, can't, I honestly can't even remember where I learned it from or, or I think it may have just come to me. Um, Basically you're saying to torture your dogs. Make them think. I'm just kidding about the torture. Stress, well, well it's, you know, stress testing, Tra mm -hmm. train them through stress. Can your dog handle stress or is the stress of the real world going to make them lose the control? Okay. Because okay. there is going to be, you're only human, and you know, you may come home every day at 5 p.m. and feed your dog right when you get home, and then one day there's an accident on the freeway and you know you don't make it home till six. And the dog tears the house apart. Correct. Yeah, that's good chance. So, so getting them used to change and getting them used to stress that isn't so much real world stress, but created stress for their own benefit. All right, give me another one. Uh, another one would be to give affection when the dog is not necessarily asking for it. So let's just say, I'm your dog, I come up to you, you know, I'm like, hey, pet me, pet me, touch me, let's, you know, let's grab the, the toy that I love and play with me. If you wait for them to like be like, oh, he's busy right now, or she's busy right now, and they walk away from you, and then boom, you do exactly what they, essentially what they wanted to do anyway. You call them back, you bring out the toy, you do the playtime, you do the love. Again, makes you more relevant. It's like, oh wow, he chooses when he wants to do these things with me. I don't just come over here and, and take get it from him and get it, and then now now I don't just. Couldn't you get that dog that's like, hey? Hey! Pet me! <laughs> yeah. You know, you're sitting here, they put their nose under your hand, right. and you're like, get, get away, get, you know, and not, and making sure that you're not doing it in a way that's obvious, like, get out of here, like, I'm not playing with you right now, just, hey, I'm, I'm reading my book, and I don't even see you, I'm just reading my book, and the dog is like, oh, he seems really busy, they walk away, boom, you go for it. Okay. Creates relevance. Seems like we're playing games with these dogs. You don't it. know where your bull's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. I might love you tomorrow. I might not. But life is a game, man. Keep going. Uh, <laughs> now you're. Now I see your true colors. <laughs> <laughs> life is a game. Um, and then the third thing that I would say without having to have too much explanation behind it would be, uh, it kind of goes along with that last one, but... Yeah, I'll, I'll do a different one. You know, something that... This one is more common. When you get home... Don't get home and just instantly rally your dog up or, and not even just get home, but you know, let's say I'm taking a nap in my bedroom and I come outside and my dog is out there hanging out with, you know, my friends or my kids or my family. I don't have any kids, but pretend I'm somebody else, right? Uh, I don't want to go out there and be like, oh, I'm going to just say hi to the dog and rile the dog up and get them all amped up and all that kind of stuff before I even, you know, say hi to my wife mm -hmm. or put my stuff down from work, right? So it basically goes to the point to where our dogs are feeding off of our energy, like you said earlier, right? So if I, if I am now this super excitable person, especially when you first see me, and then most of the time that we interact, because let's be real, most people are interacting with their dogs before they leave for work, when they get home from work, right? So most of our interactions are exciting. So the dog knows, she's here, I'm gonna do some shit. Yeah. Correct, yeah. So most of our interaction with our dogs are exciting, and then we try to control their excited behavior with more excitement yelling and screaming right. come on and, take it easy you're done now go lay down exactly right or we're in the middle of playing okay stop playing now it's like you know it doesn't really work too well not even it doesn't work with humans either right yeah, yeah. so you got to make sure that you set kind of the standard right when you introduce yourself to them right which is why when i meet dogs i just kind of walk in the room and i say hi to the people first before i even think about petting the dog even if the dog wants me to pet them. I'm like, oh, why don't you pet the dog yet? You're weird. Like, well, no, I, I know how dogs communicate and I want the dog to be comfortable with me before I just get in there and start pinching its cheeks and mm -hmm. picking it up. So it's a, it's a good rule of thumb, I think, for all, not, not just your own personal dog, but any dog that you meet, just walk in there and be like, yeah, there's a dog here, it's cute. I will eventually pet it. I'll eventually uh, engage with it and interact with it, but I wanna make sure that it actually learns, learns who I am first. How about some never do this with your dog? Get any of those? 
Uh, I mean, not particularly, because I think that if, especially if you set the boundaries and set the rules and, and kind of have a good solid foundation, you should be able to do anything you want with your dog. So a little meth once in a while is cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't do drugs with your dog. No, that you know? was a joke. Don't, don't uh, yeah. When I, was, when I was in the frat, I'd put my dog away during the parties, you know? You can't see what dad's going to do. Right? <laughs> so yeah, that I, I don't know. Because cause again, it, it's like... How about hitting the dog? Some people hit their dogs when they train them. Uh, some people, I think, are hitting their dogs out of frustration because they don't know how to I mean, I'm not subscribed to striking an animal. Yeah, no, I, I it's mean, not necessary, is it? Uh, it's unnecessary, and I always tell people if pain trains dogs, I'd be out of the business. Okay. So no matter, even with tools, right? People think that these tools that we use- Like shock collars. Like shock collars. Like, oh, well, it's just hurting them. That's why they're getting trained. It's like, well, not necessarily. If this was an easy way out, I, I would be out of the business. Why would I have to teach you how to use it? Right? Yeah. So there's there's ways to do it. And there's, you know, processes to make sure that, first of all, you understand so that the dog can understand. So um, it's really important to, you know, I, I kind of look at it in like wavelengths, right? We've got some adult humans here. Uh, some are here. We don't need to talk about them. Uh, and then we got kids and we got like dogs and cats and, you know, other domesticated animals, right? So we can't expect the kids and the dogs to hop up into our world and to be like, you have to listen to me. And if you don't listen to me, I'm going to smack the shit out of you. It's like, well, no, that doesn't even work with adults. Right. Right. So it, it turns into a place, it, it gets to a point where we have to kind of jump down into their world for a little bit because we can go back up into ours. Right. We don't, unless we get stuck there, but we shouldn't. Right. So we go back into, we jump into their world. We work with them in the way they understand we go back into our world and then we can bring them into and do the things we want to do like you know chase balls and mm -hmm. jump on my bed and mm -hmm. you know cuddle with me on the couch and all that kind of stuff talking about what we're gonna do later when we're done with this podcast what's that oh yeah 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 i guess that's another thing people didn't know about me i like to cuddle with you hmm. <laughs> we are going to cuddle later. we are we are we're gonna cuddle very aggressively yeah aggressive cuddles yeah um but, Talking about jiu-jitsu, you ju weirdos. Jiu-jitsu, yes. I just started doing jiu-jitsu, so that's something that some people don't know about me, too. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Are you doing that for exercise, self-defense? Uh, I think mainly self-defense, honestly. I, I, I've never... What have you learned from it so far? Uh, I don't mean, like, technique-wise. What have you found out about yourself? I found out about myself um, that, I mean, it's, you know, this might be my ego speaking, but my breathing is pretty good. I don't get too tired when mm -hmm. I roll. Um, so that's nice. When, when I'm rolling with people, I don't really, even the ones I'm not, I'm not as good as everybody in there, obviously. Everyone is, in there is way better than me and they can all kick my ass. Um, but I can kind of wait things out and, you know, be less tired. Cool. And take advantage of that, which I cool. think is pretty cool. I like that. Um, and I think that comes from like all the other stuff that I do that just incorporates breathing, not even, not even fitness. Um, and then besides that, I learned that it's pretty easy to get your ass kicked. Yeah. There's <laughs> a lot of tough people in the world. Yeah, it's pretty easy to get your ass kicked. So that's, uh, that's just one of those things that, you know, I mean, I always have dogs in my house. I always have stuff like that. I never really, I've, I was always in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm always in kind of safer places. Even when I was living in a warehouse, I was living in a warehouse with Rottweilers and pit bulls and stuff. So I was never really too concerned. But, and I still am not concerned, but I also want to be prepared and I want to know that if I do, which hopefully one day I do have, you know, a wife and kids and all that kind of stuff that I'm ready to protect them if need be protected and, you know, provide for them and love them and all that kind of stuff. So I like it. Yeah. Balancing paws, dog training. You got it. Dot com. Yes, sir. What's the Instagram account? Uh, at balancing paws. At balancing paws. People can go on there. They can follow you. You got a Facebook or Twitter? I got a Facebook. Uh, MySpace? Yeah, not, not anymore. No MySpace anymore. Um, I had a top eight, but... What's that? Exactly. There you go. See his What MySpace. is that? Huh? MySpace. What is it? Drew knows what it is? Music, I think. No, no. It's, it's your, your, your eight best friends. Oh. Yeah. yeah so you could... MySpace. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you, I didn't know that far. So you I could... go that far. Yeah, yeah. You, could, you, could, uh, you could brag about who your best friends were. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I never used that yeah. shit. That's okay. It's, it's gone. <laughs> is all, it gone? Is it equal. totally done? I, I don't know if it's totally done, but no. I don't think there's a top eight anymore. Now it's like, we're just all friends. Is MySpace still even a thing? I have no idea. I haven't checked. I'm going to Google we, we can go, We can check it out. Yeah, we can, we can Google it. Um, but I have a, my Instagram post, just go to my Facebook page. Okay. Um, I don't have any Twitter. I don't do any of that stuff. I just mainly stick to Instagram and it goes to Facebook. and. People that are going to be at the next 
S12 in November, dog people okay, can come break bread with you and they can ask all their dog questions. You can bring me birthday gifts too. My dog hates me. <laughs> My dog doesn't come give me hugs and kisses. And yeah. I can help you with that. Well, well you know, surprisingly, people think that the stuff that I teach will make their dogs give them less hugs and kisses, but in reality, it makes them appreciate it more. Hmm, I like that. You know, it's, the, it's like the food is better when you're hungry type of analogy. Hide the bowl. Hide the bowl. <laughs> I mean, you could do that too. It's a fun game. Go find your food. Right, in nature, nobody just fills a bowl of crunchy kibbles. Very true. Yeah, so now you got to hunt it. Hunt it, yep. yeah. Go find that food. That's funny. Uh, no, but you will be at S12, which is super cool. On your what, what day is your birthday? The 14th, the last day. Okay, so we're going to have to do... So we do a couple things. Birthday spankings, you're going to be 31. 31. So 31 birthday spankings, which is super cool at S12. Uh, but people can get to ask you their, uh, their dog questions. I'll be there, yeah. Parting words for people. Anything that you want to tell people about uh, things you've learned in business and life and dog training, all of the above encapsulated... Uh, I would say that the biggest thing that I've learned and the biggest thing for people to take away from anything that I've learned, I think, would be always or never be afraid to ask for help and to find mentors and to work with people that are willing to work with you. So um, I think that's a, a big reason why I'm still doing what I'm doing is because of the help that I've gotten from the people that I've met yeah. throughout the years, whether I ha whether I paid them to go learn from them or they paid me to work with me and we became connected in a way. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Why, why it's weird that we don't do that more mentorship programs, apprenticeship programs, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Learn from someone who has done Learn from someone who has done it. I dig it. Yeah. I appreciate you coming out, dude. I appreciate you having me out. Thank I you. I know so it's a long journey. Everybody that comes in signs the, the carry trainer. Oh, board. nice. Yeah. So somewhere on there, you can throw your signature, throw the date. Today is, uh, you what is can, the, what is the, date the 18th today? and you can put anything you want on there. You could draw a picture of a dog. You could draw a picture <laughs> of a person balancing on their head. I'm, I'm not a good artist. You can artist, write anywhere. I'm gonna, you, can, you don't have to draw that. You can I'm going to pick right here. What's the date today? Today's the 18th, 518-21. For the rest of you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. Don't be dickheads. Yeah. Visit our website, carrytrainer.com, for information about classes held throughout the U.S., Carry Trainer Apparel, and upcoming projects. You can also email us at training at carrytrainer.com for information about setting up your own private course or speaking engagement. Training at carrytrainer.com or carrytrainer.com. Said I got me some